So I have a topic this morning, the unlimited God in prayer. The unlimited God in prayer. In the prayer equation, there is a constant and there are variables. The constant is who? God is the constant. He's ever faithful, ever consistent. So God is the constant in the equation of prayer. The variables are the people, the circumstances. I think 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. Why? The things which are seen, that cancer is temporary. That means it's subject to change. Glory to God. But the things which are not seen with the physical eyes, that's God, is eternal. Praise God. So, in the prayer equation, God is the constant and is unlimited. So, when we pray, we must pray with the understanding that our conversation is with the unlimited God. Because sometimes you talk so much about the problem that the devil and the problem becomes bigger than your God. Amen. Praise God. But your focus must be on God. Let me tell you, your focus must be on God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So a few things we must know about the unlimited God in prayers. Number one, the unlimited God hears and answers prayers in unlimited ways. The unlimited God hears and answers prayers in unlimited ways. Praise God. Psalm 65 verse 2. Psalm 65 verse 2. O you who hear prayers, to you all flesh what? will come. So God is the God who hears prayers. So the, one of the adjectives to define God or to describe God is the one who hears prayer. Like we have Gideon Ogunleye in the house, the one who sells real estate. Everyone knows him for that. So God is the one who answers prayers. Praise God. That's what he does. Number two, quickly. The unlimited God answers prayers while we are still praying. Unlimited in his ways. Psalm 65, verse 24. It shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are still speaking, I will hear. Because it's unlimited. He can even answer your prayers before you start praying or while you are still praying. We used to have evening services before we started the morning service in August. So we attend morning service. We now go to our evening service. So one of those days, I was just a little bit discouraged. So I was lying down in the room preparing for the evening service. How many of you have been discouraged before? If you don't put up your hands, we are going to pray for you that God will forgive you for lying. <laughs> Praise God. Just discouraged. But I started praying. And I was asking God, okay, if you are really with me and you've asked me to start this, give me a sign. And the sign I want, you know, don't copy me because we are meant to live by faith, not by fleas. But sometimes you just want to use a fleas. Praise God. <laughs> give me a sign. So I went downstairs to, and the sign I told him was, bring a family that has never come before to church that evening. So I went down to have my lunch. All of a sudden, my phone rang. Ah, Pastor Phil, where are you? We are coming to church this evening. Wow. I was telling my wife, can you imagine this? I was literally just praying about this. So I was so happy, excited. So I came upstairs again to prepare for the service. So as I was in the bathroom brushing my chest, I said, well, Father, you are a good God. Unlimited, like we are saying today. You can give me one more sign. Praise God. <laughs> Oliver asked for more. Praise God. So as I was driving to church, you know, a couple that I've been praying with, you know, believing God for the fruit of the womb, they started calling me. The husband called me at first. I said, this is service. I can't be settling any quarry right now. Praise God. So I switched off the phone. <laughs> I switched off the phone. But as I was, I was parking, the wife too was calling. So I decided to answer. Pastor, pastor, we are pregnant. Praise God. Hallelujah. We are pregnant. Praise God. Second sign. So I was still asking for more. Father, give me one more sign. Another family came. Praise God. So he gave me three signs. So sometimes, God answers prayer while we are still praying. Praise God. Quickly this morning, number three. The unlimited God is unlimited in power and strength. Unlimited in power and strength. On strength. Isaiah 40, verse 28 to 30. Can we read that? Isaiah 40, verse 28. He neither faints nor is weary. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God is everlasting, unlimited. The Lord the creator of the ends of the earth, he neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unlimited. His wisdom is unsearchable, unlimited. Glory to God. 
He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he does what? He increases their strength. Because it's the reservoir of strength. So when you need strength, don't call your friend. Go to him. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you need gas, if you need fuel, what do you, where do you go? You go to the fuel station because there's a reservoir there. So when you need strength, go to the one who neither faints nor is weary. Hallelujah. Praise God. Go to draw strength from him. Glory to God. And luckily for us, he has put the river on our inside. Let the river flow. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no strength, he increases. Don't wait, don't wait to be weak, though. Ensure that you are continually refilling yourself. Hallelujah. Renew your strength daily from him. Verse 13. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. Remember in verse 28, he's the one that does not faint, does not grow weary. Even the youths, the species of humans that are meant to be very strong, even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But there's a class of humans in verse 31, the next verse, glory to God. But those, tell your neighbor, but those, those who wait on the Lord, that's a special species of people. They can enjoy the unlimitedness of the unlimited God. Glory to God. But those who wait on the Lord, they shall renew their strength. <laughs> glory to God. If you understand this, you will jump out of your bed every time. Praise God. It doesn't matter how you wake up. Praise God. You know that there's a system, a technology for renewing your strength. Glory to God. But those who wait on the Lord, they shall renew their strength. Then they shall mount up with wings like eagles. That means no struggles. Amen. Praise God. Eagles don't struggle. They just look for the direction, right? Praise God. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Why? Because they are connected to the reservoir of strength. Connected to the reservoir of wisdom. Glory to God. So anytime they are weary, they just go. Praise God. Okay, I have to fly because the time is flying as well. Praise God. Number four, the unlimited God is unlimited in his ways. He's unlimited in his ways. Hallelujah. Praise God. See, most times we see that, you know, the Lord does something for Sister A. And by the time we are believing God for that same thing, we start looking to God to do it the same way. So that, oh, let it just be the way it is for Pastor Benga as well. So that I can also give my testimony. I can show everyone. A sister um, had this brain tumor in her, in her, in her brain. And uh, so she was so afraid about the tumor and everything. This happened maybe last month or two months ago. So one of those days I was in the spirit and I sent her Isaiah 3 verse 10. It is well with you. I said, you replied to me, Pastor, wow. I got this same word yesterday, and my scan is on Friday. This was Tuesday. Praise God. She did the scan. My brother and my sister, no more tumor. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So it is uncommon, unlimited. Our God is unlimited. He can use any way. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In John chapter 9, verse 7, there was a man, a blind man. Uh, you know, Jesus told the blind man to go to the pool of Siloam. To wash, and he came back seeing. In Mark chapter 10, for blind Bartimaeus, he told him, Go, your faith has made you whole. He came seeing. Same issue, right? Different ways. The same unlimited God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Same issue. Hallelujah. Different ways. The same unlimited God. Hallelujah. I'm convinced that if the answer to your prayer is not in your location, God can import the answer from another location. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 46. Let me show you this. Verse 9 to 11. Praise God. There's someone I was seeing every time I was praying for this program, but he's not even here. I told Joseph, where, where is that guy? Okay, he's not here today. Okay, he's going to come. As I was praying, I kept seeing the guy. That there's a new level for him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Remember the former things of old. For I am God, the unlimited God, and there is no other. I am the unlimited God, and there is none like me. Verse 10. Declaring the end from the beginning. Can you imagine that? Declaring the end from the beginning. Even before the beginning begins. Hallelujah. He can tell you the end. Praise God. That is why he can prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Stop worrying about your enemies. Focus on your God, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Saying, My counsel shall stand. And I would, okay. And from ancient times, things that are not yet done. Saying, My counsel shall stand. 
and I will do all my pleasures. Verse 11. Praise God. Calling a bird of prey from the east, the man who executes my counsel from where? From a far country. Stop looking, stop limiting your unlimited God. He can import that man from a far country. He will think he's trying to relocate because of his own desire, but it's because of you. Praise God. Hallelujah. He will orchestrate everything. That everything. There was a, a we are in Manitoba. I have a pastor friend in uh, Saskatchewan. So the guy was telling me of how he has a man that does everything for him. I mean, I was just starting. I was wondering, Lord, how can I get this kind of man? Praise God. <laughs> that does everything for him, technical and everything. Praise God. By the time this man came to me, the way I was shouting, I'm, I'm sure the man was wondering, what's wrong with this guy? The guy came to me on the platform. I, I just told him, I heard he could play the keyboard. And I told him, please, can you come help us? So, Pastor, I will come. From that day, he was with us all through, doing all the sound, everything. And I think I was the one, okay, well, it's a long story. Can I explain it? I said, no, I don't have time. <laughs> but anyway, the Lord brought him to me, praise God. And when his time was up as well, he was busy with other things. The, the Lord brought us again, a music producer, praise God, that knows everything about sound. Praise God, hallelujah. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, you can never be stranded. Yeah. Ask him, are you a child of God? Yeah. If you're a child of God, your God is unlimited. Yeah. You can never be stranded. Yeah. Hallelujah, praise God. There was a time I was coming back from offshore, and my, my wife was in traffic. She couldn't get to me. So, and I didn't have any money in my pocket. I'm sure those of you that have been like, I, I shared it back then. No money in my pocket. I was stranded. Praise God. But I keep telling people, get the wisdom from your place of prayer. So as I was praying in the spirit, the spirit of God told me to go stand by a particular door at the airport. So I went there. doesn't make sense. But I was standing. So I was standing. All of a sudden, I saw a young man that I last saw in my secondary school. 1995. Praise God. He was, he was one year my senior. He was saying, oh, Philip, nice to see you. I need money for taxi. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. And he gave it to me directly. Praise God. God is unlimited in his way. If I have seen Pastor Ben, for example, I see him every time. But he imported someone from my past so that I can know that he's unlimited. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. Glory to God. Calling a bird of prey from the east and the man who executed my counsel from a far, not from a near country, from a far country. Praise God. How many of you remember the first name and last name? Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. He's still working. He's still working. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. That was number five, right? Number four. Okay, number four. Unlimited in these ways. Okay, let's just go to number, number five now. The unlimited God is the God of all grace. In him, there is unlimited grace. First Peter 5.10. 5, the unlimited God is the God of all grace. So there's no grace you are looking for. It's unlimited. Praise God. No matter the career profession that you are doing, the God is, our God is unlimited. Praise God. First Peter, okay, yes. But may the God of how many grace? All grace. Who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After you have suffered for a while, you have passed through some challenges for a while, then he will perfect, he will establish, he will strengthen and will settle you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Second Corinthians 9 verse 8. Our God is more than able. And God is able to make how many grace? All grace. Underline that in your Bible. No matter the grace I'm looking for, my God is the unlimited God. He's the God of all grace. He's able to make all grace abound, not in little measure, abound towards you. That you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. If you are working with God, get used to the word abundance. Amen. Praise God. Abound. Hallelujah. Because he's a big God. He does big things. Hallelujah. Praise God. And where do we obtain this grace? Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. His throne is called the throne of grace. So have that understanding. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of what? Of grace. Hallelujah. Praise God. That we may obtain mercy and find grace in, for help in time of need. So when we pray, we always find grace. The God of unlimited grace. So number six, write this one down. The manifestation of the unlimited nature of God in our lives can become more and more apparent as we fellowship with him. I'll say that again. The manifestation of the unlimited nature of God in our own lives 
can become more and more apparent. Because we already have the seed, we have the Holy Spirit, but it has to become more and more apparent. So that happens when we keep on fellowshipping with him. Hallelujah. Praise God. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, chapter 3 verse, 10, verse 18. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There's a guy I'm seeing. That guy with glasses. Can you stand up, sir? No, no, no. Yes, you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands. Say, Father, I receive. There's a big breakthrough coming. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise. I hope that guy comes. The other guy. Praise God. Don't miss your appointed time. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. But we all, tell somebody, we all. We no all. one left behind. We all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed, glory to God, into the same image, from glory to glory. Why? How? By the Spirit of the Lord. Let's go. Praise God. So as we fellowship with God, we also can enjoy that unlimited nature of God. Number seven, the unlimited God is unlimited in what he can do for us. The unlimited God is unlimited in what he can do for us, but according to the degree of his power that is at work in us. The unlimited God is unlimited in what he can do for us, but according to the degree of his power at work in us. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. We all know that scripture. Praise God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly. You know, the Bible was struggling on how to describe it because our God can do. You know, so there was no English word because if you had just put do, it's enough. If you had put exceedingly, it's enough. But you have to combine all of them together. And this is not even amplified yet. Praise God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. But what? According to the power that is at work in us. So he can do it's unlimited. But the power in you can limit him. Can you imagine? So we as humans, we can limit the unlimited God in our own lives. We have the Holy Spirit. And Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, you shall receive power. How when? After the Holy Spirit has come. And you become a witness. So everyone that has the Holy Spirit has power. Tell your neighbor, everyone who has the Holy Spirit has power, has unlimited power. Praise God. Hallelujah. So when the Holy Spirit comes, there's power automatically. But the issue is, is the power working or is the power dormant? According to the power that is at work in you. Praise God. Hallelujah. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and what? With power. When you have the Holy Spirit, there's power. Glory to God. But how much of the power is at work in you? For example, maybe Pastor Sunday can be 70 degrees. Pastor Ayo, 50%. Praise God. The BC, maybe 30%. So to the degree at which the power is working, then God can work as well. Praise God. So you determine how much of the unlimited God you can enjoy. Hallelujah. Praise God. Please write this down. To consistently experience the power of the unlimited God, his power must be consistently at work in you. To consistently experience the power of the unlimited God, his power must be consistently at work in you. Hallelujah. Praise God. So can you limit God? Yes, you can. Psalm 78 verse 41. Can you limit the unlimited God? Psalm 78, verse 41. Yes, again and again, they tempted God, the unlimited God, and limited the Holy One of Israel. Can you imagine that? They limited the Holy One of Israel. How? Through unbelief. Through unbelief, they limited the Holy One of Israel. So when we pray, we must pray in faith to the unlimited God. Anytime you pray, you must pray in faith. To the unlimited God. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Hebrews 11 verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible. Tell your neighbor, impossible. What's the meaning of impossible? Cannot happen. Praise God. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God in prayer. Remember our topic is the unlimited God in prayers, right? So he who comes to God in prayers must believe 
is a must. Believing faith is a must. That he is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Our God is a rewarder of those who come by faith. So the only way to come to God in prayer is by faith. For example, if I ask you to come to me, the only way to come to me is by movement, either walking or jumping or running. That's the only way you can come to me. The only way to come to God, like in prayer, is by faith, by believing. Hallelujah. If you're not believing yet, don't bother praying. Get more word. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's look at Mark 11, 24. Believing is important. You must come to God by faith. To experience the unlimited God, you must be unlimited in your believing. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them. When do you believe that you receive them? When you are praying. And you will have them. So before you have them, you must believe that you have received them. We, can't, this, we can spend a day on this. Praise God. So let's move on. Praise God. Quickly, there are three things that we must do to consistently enjoy the unlimited God in prayers. Number one, you must meditate on the unlimitedness of God's power. Meditate constantly until you become conscious of the power of the unlimited God. If you have lost a, lost, a, a loved one before, the person is gone. But sometimes you have a memory of them. Maybe the good times you had together or just grief. But the person is not just dying today. Well, the moment you meditate or you think about them, you become sad or you become happy because you have, you have, brought, you have brought their memory to your consciousness. Meditation brings the power of God to your consciousness. You must be conscious of the power of God when you pray. Please write this down. Meditation produces the consciousness required for the manifestation of the unlimited power of God in our lives. I'll take it again. Meditation produces the consciousness required for the manifestation of the unlimited power of God in our lives. Praise God. Just one scripture from there, Joshua 1.8. This is God giving Joshua very good advice. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you, sh you shall meditate on it how many times? Day and night. You must meditate. That's the secret of, if you see men of God doing great things, this is the secret. They are conscious of the power of the almighty God. You meditate on it until he becomes more real than the situation. So that you just tell somebody you are healed. Because he's conscious that God is far greater than that particular sickness. Some people, when they, some Christians, when they get um, some, uh, some symptoms, maybe your heart is beating, you know, irregularly. You, the first thing some people do is to go to Google. Heart beating regularly. And Google will give you good symptoms. Praise God. <laughs> but you should go back and meditate on the power of the unlimited God. So that he becomes bigger than what you are feeling. And with time, the other feeling disappears at the instance of your consciousness of the unlimited God. That's how it works. Praise God. You must be conscious. You must meditate. That's God giving someone advice. I'm sure you can take the advice. Meditate on my word day and night. Then you will make your way prosperous. You will have good success by doing your own part. Also, you see that in Psalm 1 as well. You know, the secret of being a blessed child of God. Okay, praise God. Number two, make magnifying and exalting the unlimited God a lifestyle. Magnify God constantly, consistently, in every way. Because whatever you focus on becomes bigger. Please write this down if you can. We experience the incredible unlimited God by giving him incredible unlimited praise. How do you magnify God? Psalm 69, verse 30. Psalm 69, verse 30. Praise God. I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him, how? With thanksgiving. So we magnify him with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. So let thanksgiving become your lifestyle. As you grow in Christ, thanksgiving becomes 95% of your prayer time. Because you realize that God has already qualified you to be a partaker of his divine nature. He has given you all things that you need for life and for godliness. He has said all things are yours. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you are conscious of that, 
your prayers will be thanksgiving. If they ask you, do you have a prayer request? You will have, praise God, because you are always giving thanks. So ensure that you are always giving thanks. Psalm 35, verse 27. Psalm 35, verse 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause and let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. God has pleasure in your prosperity. That means he will be displeased if you're not prospering. Hallelujah. Praise God. He has pleasure. You bring him pleasure. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. There are some other very good things I should have shown you, but let's just take the last one. Pray in tongues. Hallelujah. Pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Number three. Pray in tongues to know the unlimited God more and more and to, and to gain access into the unlimited wisdom of the unlimited God. Take that again. Pray in tongues to know the unlimited God more and more and to gain access into the unlimited wisdom of the unlimited God. There's always more in God. There's always more in God. Daniel 11, 32, those who know their God, they will be strong and they will do exploit. Paul, after seeing Jesus, after all the revelations, still prayed in Philippians 3, 10, that I may know him. Hallelujah. Praise God. There's always more to know in God. And there's always more wisdom to acquire from him. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 2. Pray in tongues. Make praying in tongues your lifestyle. Hallelujah. Praise God. You will get wisdom. And the wisdom we get is not the kind of common wisdom. The wisdom we get in the place of prayer is that kind of wisdom when God will tell you to go around Jericho. Hallelujah. Praise God. It will, it will be foolish. But if you do that, you see the result. Amen. Praise God. Okay, let's read that. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to limited men. Men are limited. If you speak in a tongue, you do not speak to limited men, but you speak to the unlimited God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Why do you spend time discussing much more with limited men? Men are limited. That man is not even sure he will wake up tomorrow. Praise God. Hallelujah. But God is unlimited in his ways. So he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to limited men, but to unlimited God, for no one understands him. You know, I've been reading the scripture for a long time. But about three weeks ago, the no one understands him jumped at me. So not just the words now. And I realized for a child of God, no one understands him. Because today, God can tell you, go to the left. Tomorrow, in the place of prayer, go to the right. No wonder Jesus told Nicodemus that a child of God, a born again child of God, is like the wind. You hear the sound, you don't know where it's coming, you don't know where it's going. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. No one understands him. However, in the spirit, he does what? He speaks mystery. Just the way your mother tongue is Yoruba. Our spiritual tongue is mysteries. Hidden truths. Praise God. Hallelujah. When you speak in tongues, you have access into mysteries. Lastly, this morning, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6 and 16. Remember, when we pray in tongues, we pray mysteries. We get access into God's wisdom. Hallelujah. Praise God. Tell your neighbor, pray in tongues. Verse 6. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. When we pray in tongues, we speak wisdom. Yet, not the wisdom of this age. Hallelujah. Praise God. Nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. So when we pray in tongues, we have access to the wisdom of the age to come. So you can live that eternal life now. Praying in tongues, we get access. We speak wisdom among those who are mature because a babe in Christ we not understand these things. Not the wisdom of this age. Even the rulers, principalities, they will not understand the wisdom that we get from the place of prayers. Verse 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in the mystery. Remember 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2. Mystery, that's our language. Hidden truths. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before ages. Not from us, but for our glory. It was hidden for us. Tell anybody, it was hidden. For our glory. Verse 8. Which none of the rulers of this age knew. This is a type, an example of the wisdom we are talking about. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. So that wisdom was too high for the principalities. It was too high for the devil. They didn't understand how it would come to pass. 
Likewise, when we speak in tongues, we have access to those mysteries. You pray for interpretation, and God will give you what to do. The next step to see. I have many examples, but I can't share them with you. Praise God. Verse 9. But as it is written, this is what we get in the place of prayers. The unlimited God can give you things that is beyond human senses. Beyond what you can see. Beyond what you can hear. Beyond what, what you can feel. I has not seen nor ear heard. It has not entered into the heart of any man. Glory to God. If you have understanding of these things, your shoulders will be square every time. Your boss can talk anyhow. You just say, will you? If I call your name in the place of prayer, you are gone. So, because you are, you are pitting him. We, are, we have access to Abraham's blessing now. God said, anyone that blesses you, I will bless. Why are you now being the one begging up and down? Praise God. You are a child of the most high God. Your father made the heavens and the earth. Glory to God. Everything in, in, in the earth belongs to your father. Glory to God. You have access. Glory to God. But in the place of prayer, according to the power that is at work in you. Pray in terms of the of God. I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor have en- entered into the heart of any man. The things, there are things which God has prepared for those who love him. So, Father, how do we get access into these things? Verse 10. But God has revealed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God has revealed them to us. How? Through his spirit. So when we engage the spirit of God, the things that God has revealed to the spirit, to his spirit, he reveals to us. Hallelujah. For the spirit searches all things. You know you have Google Map. The Google search. The search engines. So people say Google is your friend. But the Holy Spirit is the greatest search engine. Hallelujah. That ever existed. Glory to God. Because he searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. So if you are in a fix, stay with God in the place of prayer. Hallelujah. Praise God. Before you call your friends, stay with God. Can someone stand to your feet this morning? Let's begin to search those things out. Can we pray in tongues this morning? Can we pray in the Spirit this morning? Begin to search those things. Ask the Holy Spirit, reveal the things I need to know now. What are the things I need to know now for my career? What are the things I need to know now for my family? Spirit of the living God, reveal them to me. Hallelujah. The things that I have not seen, ears have not heard, they have not entered into the heart of any man. So, Taleko Shandava, Ramanda Koda Bakata, Shanda Baka, praying tongues this morning, Ashata Bakata Bakata, Asande Koda, the flesh profits nothing, but the spirit, Akasho Dabaka, quickens, Ashate Koba no. Let it get louder, louder, louder. Let's play. O Shanda Bakada Bakata, O Santa Leko Baka Shandalo. Pray this morning. Abaka, Father, reveal to me the things I need to know for this season of my life. Ashanda baka tobara. Shanda baka da baka da baka ta. Shanda pare kataka. You are the unlimited God. Masonta kata baka ta. Isanta la baka ta baka ta. Shanda para mana kosa ta. Shanda baka ta baka ta. Shanda baka ta baka sha ta. Oh mana mana kasa ta. Rega baka ta. Ishanta Bakate, Ramana Mana Mana Mana, Rako Santo Bakasate, Iramano Bakasantale, Ragada Bakata, Shambara Kata Bakata, Shanda Bakata Bakata Bakata, O Mana Mana Makada Bakata Bakata, Shanda Bakata Bakasadabara, O Mana Kasante. Oh, Bakata Mana, Shada Bakada Bakata, Sandale Boko, pray this morning. Father, reveal to me all the things I need to know. Ashanda by your spirit this morning. Oh, Bakata Bakata, oh, for my business, for my career, for my family, for my work with you, Lord. Reveal to me the things I need to know. Ah, Shandale, Shada Bakata Bakata, Shanda Bakata Bakata Bakata, oh, Shanda Bakata Bakata, oh, Ramana Santale. Bagada bagada bagata, shanda bagata bagashada. Ina mano, sente boko shata. Bagada bagada bagada, shanda bagada bagata. Roba sante, imana mana mana, sente boko santa. Bagada bagata bagada bagata. Ah, let it flow this morning. Out of our belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Ah, shanda bagada bagata. Ramana mana mana, sente boko sante. Arabakata bakata, shanda bakata bakata. Oh, God, give God thanks this morning. Say, Father, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Lord, we give you praise. Father, we worship you, Lord. Blessed be your holy name. Hallelujah. Let someone give God a shout of free. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God.